Hey there, we have so many things to catch up on today. We have projects and projects and projects, and I have a special giveaway too. Hey there, thank you so much for being here. My name is Felicia from Sweet Georgia, and this is Taking Back Friday. This is a space where we come every Friday, almost every Friday, and we talk about knitting and yarn and color and weaving, and we talk about the fiber arts. I like to talk about how important it is to make time to make things. Now, today, I have a lot of things to catch up with you guys about. That I actually wrote down a list. I have six things that I wanna cover, not including this first thing, which is that this past Friday, I was a little bit tied up uh, going to pick up the keys to the brand new space that is going to be the brand new Sweet Georgia studio in the coming months. I've just picked up the keys. It's very exciting. I got to walk in there for the first time. Uh, I, I First, I attended with my family. We went with my family. Um, the kids were there. We picked up the keys and it was a very, very exciting time. They got a chance to run around the new space without any furniture. It was all good. <laughs> Yeah, I'm really looking forward to giving you guys a closer tour at what's happening inside uh, that space. So if you hadn't heard, I did talk about this in an episode a while back, but we are gonna be moving the Sweet Georgia studio to a brand new space that is, well, brand new to us, but it's gonna be a new space that we're gonna be building out, we're gonna be doing some renovations, and in this space we'll be able to uh, do more teaching, we'll be able to do more filming, we'll be able to do more dyeing. It's gonna be a very, very exciting place for all of us to be be together again. And uh, yeah, I'm very, very much looking forward to building out this space and being able to share that with you guys through these videos. And, and hopefully if you ever come to Vancouver, it's a place that you can actually come and visit as well. So you can look out for more of that. It's going to be happening over the next six months or so. That's what we're going to be doing. That's, the, that's our life for the next six months, is moving to a new studio. So now we have a lot of things to catch up on, but before we talk about this sweater, I wanna talk about another sweater project that sort of came along uh, very recently. We heard about Marie Green's four-day sweater knit-along, and uh, we decided to see if we could participate in a way. And so she just released, last week, she just released uh, the name and the project that this is going to be. And so it's a sweater that theoretically you should be able to knit within four days. Uh, I will probably not be able to do that in four days. So the sweater is called Soundtrack and it is knit in DK weight yarn. And so it's a two color sweater. So it's mainly a one main color for the body of the sweater. And then there's some yoke patterning. So I wanted to participate in the sweater knit along because I had previously knit one of Marie Green's patterns. She uh, designed the beekeeper cardigan, which I knit a couple of months ago. And that sweater, that beekeeper cardigan was originally one of the four day sweater knit alongs from a couple of years ago, maybe two years ago. And so that took me way longer than four days to knit that sweater, but it was designed for the previous four day knit along. So I like Marie's designs. I like how she writes patterns. I really enjoyed that knit. And so what I wanted to do was I wanted to participate again in this four day knit along. So you might be able to see, uh, we did a couple of posts with some suggestions for yarns, for color combinations, things like that. Now I have decided to use the BFL and Silk DK because I really enjoyed using that the last time for the Beekeeper cardigan. So we had a couple of color ideas that we sort of arranged and I was trying to find some <laughs> colors to use for my sweater and I decided to go with Mulberry for the main color. So the main color for my particular sweater is gonna be Mulberry. This is in that BFL Silk DK. And then for the contrast, which is like the yoke section that she's having, um, I'm gonna use Lupine one of my favorite colors. So these colors together to make my sweater, obviously it's gonna take more than two skeins for the body of the sweater. Um, I have a whole bunch here. I just have to wind them into balls. But this is basically my next sweater project now that I have completed this sweater project. So if you're interested in uh, knitting that four day knit along, uh, basically the pattern is available for pre-order right now on Ravelry. And uh, we have color suggestions and yarn suggestions and all things like that. But the actual knitting of it, the pattern itself will be released in, at the beginning of July. So you kind of have this time right now to prepare, to think about colors, to think about ideas, think about what you wanna make. And then July, she'll release all of the uh, pattern instructions and then, or I think she 
might release them step by step by step, like day by day by day. So they'll be released in chunks and then you'll be able to knit this sweater. So I'm excited to do that. Um, yeah, I'm quite looking forward to that. So I am quite looking forward to knitting this DK weight sweater because I have just finished this sweater, which is a fingering weight sweater. So let me tell you about this sweater. This sweater is called Chauncey and it's designed by Isabel Kramer. It is originally uh, just like a two color sweater as well. So it's color work on the top, one contrast color for the yoke and then your main color for the body. Now uh, for my particular sweater, I decided to use um, a party of five that I happen to have here laying around, as you do. <laughs> a party five um, mini skein set. So it's a gradient mini skein set going from this sort of lollipop pink color all the way to kind of like a gingery coppery color sort of thing. And so I have all the colors in between. So what I basically did was I took the graphic for the yoke and then divided it into five sections. And then each one of these sections I was going to basically color with a different color from the party five. So it worked out really, really, really well. There's like less copper showing up than you think, but it's it mostly, yeah, I really, really enjoy how it turned out. The fact that it is fingering weight means that the, the it, it's like a pixel size. The pixel size is smaller. Each of the stitches is smaller. And so the graphic shows more detail. It, it's just, it looks less chunky, less blocky, a little bit more fine grained. Um, but knitting a fingering weight sweater does take longer than knitting a DK weight sweater. So I felt like the sleeves were just taking forever and ever and ever. So I used the recent uh, bamboo needles that I got from Chiagu, the interchangeable bamboo ones. They are fantastic. I really like them for the color work section. And then I continue to use the bamboo down the rest of the body. But then for the sleeves, I switched to the shorties. So Chiagu also makes these needles that are really, really, really tiny, really, really short. And they make a um, circumference about this big. And so that allows you to knit sleeves without having to do magic loop. I've always done magic loop because it was the economical choice, right? To just buy one set of long circular needles and then use them for everything. But I find that actually it does make a difference speed wise, just to have to cut down on the t length of time that it takes to stuff the stitches back onto the needle and rearrange them in order to do magic loop, just keeping them on that small circumference needle has actually worked really, really well. So I feel like I was able to knit the sleeves faster than I might normally knit them. The thing that slows me down is that I alternate rounds. Uh, I alternate balls of yarn with every round. And so, um, you know, having to drop one and pick up the next and drop one and pick up the next, that kind of slows my process down a little bit. But I feel like it's important to do just to make sure that the colors are blended really, really evenly through the main part of the body. So that is this sweater. I believe I knit the second size up and it fits wonderfully. It has short rows in the back. So that way, you know, the back is a little bit longer. It's just, it's a lovely, lovely sweater. I would make this again. So obviously you can see that there's a lot of yarn left over from knitting the yoke of this pattern. And so I talked about this a couple of weeks ago about how I was gonna knit the Breathe and Hope shawl and I'm going to, so the Breathe and Hope shawl is a shawl pattern that was designed by Casa Pinka and it was released a couple, maybe a month or so ago. And so what I've decided to do, based on your votes, most people voted to see me knit the Breathe and Hope shawl with the party of five, which is these colors here, these five colors with this color, which is uh, a skein that I had dyed as a demonstration for a dye class. And uh, yeah, so this is coming along really, really well. I'm still working on sort of the first color section, but this is the beginning of that. So you can kind of see the texture of those stitches. It's interesting because it's kind of like a garter stitch pattern but at the same time there's a slip it's not a slip stitch you basically are knitting into the row below and then picking up that strand of yarn kind of like how we did um for the beekeeper cardigan actually is a similar technique where you're knitting knitting knit into the row below and then you pick up those and so you get an extra strand you get like an extra bar going across that yeah it's giving this first section a little bit more texture um, and a little bit more interest a little bit different than just garter garter rows you know different alternating color stripes and garter stitch so this is um this has been fun so far and easy to remember easy pattern to memorize which is always very very handy 
And yeah, this is coming along nicely. Now, I haven't been knitting a ton on that Breathe and Hope shawl because I have been knitting something else recently. For the past, I think I started Thursday, so. Five days, it's taken five days. Five days I've knit this. This is basically a five by five cowl that I'm going to be uh, making little tutorials for, for the School of Sweet Georgia. Basically, this is something that I talked about a couple of weeks ago about knitting this five by five cowl, which is basically like a scarf that you then kitchener together at the top in order to make a cowl. And so it's like a double, you, you, you twist it and then you can wear it doubled up like a cowl like that and uh, it's five by five because it's a five by five ribbing pattern so it's five knit stitches five purl stitches five knit stitches five purl stitches and so the reason why i'm knitting this is because uh tabitha our design director she just recently published a course on the school of sweet georgia called learn to knit your first scarf and that is for people who have never picked up knitting needles before this is the very first thing that they could possibly knit is to knit a garter stitch rectangle. So you learn the knit stitch, you learn to cast on, you learn to cast off, all of that kind of stuff. The next step, I feel like, is you'll have to learn how to purl. So by learning how to purl, you'll be able to make stockinette. So in this pattern, I will be able to teach people how to do the purl stitch, how to do ribbing, I teach how to do provisional cast on, and then I'm going to teach how to do kitchener stitch to kitchener not only the knit stitches but also the purl stitches together. So that is all going to be coming together pretty quickly. I love knitting this pattern because it sort of allows you to mix and blend different colors together. So you can see it's like melange effect. It's marled and it's marled because I'm using a few different colors here. So I'm using this one, which is Magician. This this is Cash Lux Fine. So it's cashmere sock yarn, cashmere blend fingering weight yarn. But this is the color Magician. This is the color Mulberry. I'm on a mulberry kick right now. And the last color is called, well, I ran out of the last color. I basically knit until there's no more of the silk mist left. So the silk mist is this mohair and I basically knit, 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 holding all three strands together until there's no more of the silk mist and then I'm done. And then I'm gonna graft it all together. So that's what I've been working on lately, is working on this 5x5 cowl project for the School of Sweet Georgia. We have some other things that we were planning to release in the School of Sweet Georgia this year and they all involved Mm, travel <laughs> for guest instructors and things like that. And so we've had to sort of rejig our plan. So what we decided to do is we decided to host them on Zoom. So the first course that we're going to be teaching on Zoom is Spinning with Supported Spindles with Debbie Held. So Debbie is a spinner. She's a writer. She writes a ton about spinning. She teaches spinning. And so she's going to teach this first one, which is about supported spindles. The second workshop that we're offering is with Jana Maria Valley, who, uh, taught the tapestry weaving course for the School of Sweet Georgia last year. And so now it's kind of like leveling up with a little bit more technique. And so she's gonna teach weaving stripes, specifically stripes and different techniques for making stripes, horizontal stripes, vertical stripes, all different kinds of stripes and talking more about tapestry technique. And so those two Zoom workshops, the first one, Supported Spindles is gonna be Thursday, June the 18th. And then Jana's class is gonna be June 23rd. And so you can look for all of that information on the School of Sweet Georgia website there. So hopefully we'll see you in one of those Zoom classes. Now the very last thing that I want to talk to you guys about today is very, very exciting. I have here a copy of a new book that is written by Tabitha. Now I don't know when she had time to write this book, but oh my word, it is a massive massive book. Um, this is this is fantastic and I know that it, Tabitha wrote this book because oh she signed it because in here it says chapter one step one pick the perfect yarn step two above all else swatch 
that's how I know Tabitha wrote this book. But basically, she's written this book. It's called Switch and Knit Stitch Dictionary. But basically, the idea is that there are 12 patterns in here that are kind of like pattern recipes for which you can use any yarn. So the idea is that you knit a gauge swatch of your yarn and then using those numbers, you can basically come in here and uh, pick and choose what you want to make. Let me see. So for example, there is a lovely t-shirt here, t-shirt pattern. And all you need to do is figure out what measurements you wanna make it for and then depending on what your gauge is, it will tell you how many stitches to cast on, what are the directions, how many to decrease, what your yarn requirements are for every single gauge and every single size. So here's the pattern. So for example, for the 45 inch size, if your gauge is four, then you decrease eight stitches. Like the whole thing is all charted out um, so that you know exactly what numbers you need to hit in order to knit this pattern using whatever yarn you have. And then, and at the end of the book, she also has a whole bunch of stitch, uh, stitch patterns. So it's a stitch, dic stitch dictionary where you can take any one of these patterns and you could apply it to the patterns that are in here. So the pattern recipes can be adapted. You can swap out different stitch patterns for these stitch patterns, whatever other stitch patterns you find, and you can kind of apply them to those patterns and then basically make whatever it is that you want to make. So if you want to make your t-shirt and you want to make it with a different lace pattern or you want to make it with just stockinette, you can do all that by just switching out those, uh, those, those stitch patterns. This is something that I feel like many people have been asking us for, specifically for the school. A lot of people have been asking, um, do you teach any classes on how to design your own sweater? And that course is coming together right now. There's a series that Leah and uh, Tabitha are working on right now, and it's gonna be called Leah Learns Design. And basically, Tabitha mentors Leah through the process of uh, designing her own sweater, knitting a gauge swatch, all of these kinds of things. But this is also something that you can work through if you're wanting to make your own garment, your own pair of socks, your own stole. So working with the yarn that you have, understanding the gauge, making a swatch, really uh, investigating what the fabric is like and determining what that fabric is suitable for, then you can apply that information to a garment pattern or a project pattern or whatever it is. And so that is what this book helps you work through. And so I actually have two copies. And so we're gonna do a giveaway here. <laughs> so what you can do is there'll be a link below. And if you click on that link below in the description box, that's where all of the information is. I make a link to the show notes page You can click on that link and there will be information for how to join the giveaway. And we'll leave this giveaway open for like a couple of weeks. And then uh, yeah, we'll pick a winner and we'll send out a copy of Tabitha Hedrick's brand new book. Congratulations to Tabitha. This is fantastic. It's massive. I just don't know where she got the time to do all this. It's quite amazing. So congratulations, Tabitha. So there are so many knit-alongs that are about to start this summer. So there's obviously the Marie Green Olive Knits sweater knit-along that you can start. That starts July 1st, I believe. We also at Sweet Georgia will be having a summer lace knit-along. So you'll hear more details about that coming up. And as well, we are planning our mystery knit-along. That is all coming together. If you are a member of the School of Sweet Georgia, the club, for that mystery knit along is already open so you can start popping your name in there and uh, there's going to be a little bit of chatter before it all starts but things are happening lots of make-alongs to join i'm really interested to hear if uh, any one of these is on your list if you're already in a make-along if you're maybe going to do tour de fleece at all spinning this summer what are your summer plans i'm interested to hear as well so that's about it for today thank you so much for being here to talk about yarn and color and knitting if you like this content please do hit like and if you'd like to see more content like this please do hit subscribe we come here almost every friday to talk about color and craft and things that make us happy. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you in the next one. All right, bye for now.